So the communication between neurons is fascinating because neurons actually use electricity and chemistry to communicate. So they use an electrochemical gradient to produce electricity within a single cell. And so to understand how one neuron communicates with another neuron, you first sort of have to understand how one section of one neuron communicates with another section of a neuron, because neurons can be huge. You can have a single cell that goes all the way down your leg. And so how does, it, how does a signal that's generated in the bottom of your spine travel in a timely manner all the way down to the tip of your toe? And that's actually through electricity. The neurons can produce electrical impulses that are called action potentials that travel extremely quickly through the, uh, the cell. On the inside of a neuron, there are less positive ions than there are on the outside of a neuron. And ions are charged particles, which are atoms that have either gained or lost an electron. And that means that there are more charged particles in one area than there are in another area. And so this basically means that the outside of the cell is positively charged compared to the inside of the cell. So the inside of the cell is negatively charged, the outside of the cell is positively charged. And that state is known as polarized because you have a positive pole on the outside and a negative pole on the inside. And the cell then can use this electric potential across the membrane to generate an electrical signal by discharging that charge. And so all the cell has to do to discharge that charge is open a channel in its membrane that allows positive ions from the outside of the cell to move to the inside of the cell. And that neutralizes that charge across the membrane. And that neutralization of the charge is actually an electrical signal that then moves down the axon in sort of a wave manner. So it doesn't happen instantaneously. There's a section of the cell that opens up its ion channels. That part of the cell becomes depolarized, which then signals the neighboring part of the membrane to start opening channels. So you can think about it as sort of if you're holding a rope in your hand and it's attached to something at, at the other end of the room and you give it a flick, that wave that you see traveling down the rope, that's the electrical charge being discharged across the membrane, traveling down the axon of a neuron. And these action potentials, once they get to the, the end of the axon, which is the sort of sending part of a neuron, they signal the release of chemicals, which then can be detected by other neurons. So an analogy for how neurons communicate is, you can think of it as, as like the postal service. You have a signal being generated by the person who's writing the letter, which is the cell that's sending the signal. And then the letter itself, you can think of as small chemicals that we, we call neurotransmitters, that are chemicals that are released into the extracellular space, the space around the cell, to communicate with other cells. And most of the time, these neurotransmitters are released at a point where two neurons contact each other, which is known as a synapse. And in the synapse, there's a tiny little space and so the neuron who's sending the signal, they have the molecules that have been written, you know, the letter that's been written, and they release it out into the synapse, which you can think about sort of the postal service driving it around, trying to figure out where your house is. And then the receptors that receive that signal, receive that chemical, are on the surface of the receiving neuron. And so you can think of those receptors as sort of a mailbox. This is where the mail gets put. The chemicals get detected. The mail gets put in your mailbox. And then that cell can open up its mailbox, read its mail, figure out what it needs to do with the piece of information that it just got. So we've talked a lot about neurons themselves, how neurons work, how they communicate, and then how they all interact to form the nervous system as a whole. But thinking about that in a practical sense, you know, as I'm sitting here on the couch, my nervous system is doing so many different things for me. I can feel, you know, how my shoes feel on my feet. I can see everything around me. I can hear sounds around me. And I can respond and talk about neuroscience. And my brain controls all of the, these different actions. But your nervous system is also doing things that you're not consciously aware of all the time. I mean, it's, it's running your heart, it's running your breathing, it's, it's even working while you're sleeping. So your nervous system is still working for you all the time, 24 seven, your entire life, which is pretty incredible. And so just, just this process of studying how the cells of the nervous system compose the nervous system and communicate and talk to each other, the applications are almost endless. It's like we've just sort of dipped our toes into the ocean of of the knowledge of the nervous system. It's like the final frontier, you know, to try to figure out how all of this works. And there's so much more to learn. It's, it's just very exciting.